So welcome to Wind Design. Uh, I'm here with my colleague Wanda. Uh, we are both international study advisors and Sharka and Anastasia are two of our uh, students. Um, we are based in the Netherlands and studying in the Netherlands is very popular nowadays for a few reasons. First of all, in the Netherlands, high quality education is offered. Uh, you will find all the, the Dutch uh, research universities high in the international rankings. And although we are not a research university, but an applied sciences university, the Netherlands is well known for the high quality education. Another reason why the Netherlands is so popular is the open mindedness of the Dutch people. We are familiar with uh, working with people from all over the world. We have a long history of international trade, uh, so you uh, will feel very welcome um, when you come to the Netherlands. Another part of our country uh, which makes us uh, popular uh, by international students is the very interactive teaching style. There is always a lot of discussion and debate in the classroom among students and between uh, students and the teachers. And the way of learning in the Netherlands is problem based. So it's not a theory or well, theory is always the basis, but we immediately dive into uh, problems and how to solve them. Then it's easy to connect to people in the Netherlands because almost everyone speaks English. And what is also nice to know is that the Netherlands is one of the happiest and safest countries in the world. When you come to the Netherlands, it is good to know that there are two different types of universities. On one hand, we have 13 research universities. And besides that, we have 36 universities of applied sciences. It's good to know about the differences. Uh, research universities provide academic education and research. They have a more theoretical approach, uh, so without internships, and they are focusing on scientific publications. That's why we call them research universities. And this is also the reason why you will find these universities in all the international rankings, because international rankings are based on scientific publications. On the other hand, you have the Applied Sciences Universities, and Windesheim is one of them. We provide higher professional educations, and we do a bit of applied research. That means that research is not our focus, education is our focus, and therefore you also will not find us in the international rankings. That doesn't mean that we're not good, we have a different focus. Our focus is more uh, practice oriented. We have internships included in our programs. We do projects. We have collaboration with businesses and institutions in the work field. So that makes us different from research universities. It's more learning by doing. Furthermore, it's important to know that at our type of universities, you do a bachelor's degree, which is most of the time four years. And most of the students start a professional career after graduation. They don't do a master's. Of course, some of them do, but then you have to go to uh, a research university. And when you go to a research university, you do your bachelor's degree in three years uh, and then followed by a master's and you do that master's to specialize. That is how it works in the Netherlands. So, for most of you, Applied Sciences University are not well known. Uh, most of the countries don't have it. We, you have them in, in some. You have them in Germany, for example, in Belgium, uh, in Denmark, in Finland. So there are a few countries where you have them. Uh, but unique features of these universities are that our study materials are based on real life cases. We also learn you hands on competences and skills. Uh, you have to think about uh, soft skills like uh, presenting, pitching, writing, uh, project management, um, critical thinking, that kind of skills. We work with small classes, usually uh, maximum uh, 30 students per class. At our university, we have maximum 20 students per class in our English taught programs. And uh, you always work on group projects and practical assignments. You don't do that at research universities. Uh, 
Furthermore, you will get guest lectures by field professionals. So uh, you hear from the basis what it is to, to work for a company and internships are included as well as study abroad semesters. And because there is a lot of practice included in the, in the program, you have excellent career opportunities after graduation because you already have work experience and that's really nice on your CV. Okay, let's now go to our university. Windesheim is based in Zwolle. And as you can see, Zwolle is a typical Dutch city with a typical Dutch architecture. Um, and uh, Zwolle is based somewhere between the middle and the north of the Netherlands. There is a very good connection to Amsterdam and to the airport in Amsterdam. Uh, it takes you an hour by train to get there. So if you want to go home for a Christmas break, then you only need to take one train and you are at the airport. And as you can see in Zwolle, we also have the typical Dutch uh, canals in our city center. Close to the railway, railway station, you will find our campus. Uh, this is it's from, uh, from, from the road, so to say. And on the right hand side, you see our, I would say, most beautiful building, our X building. And this is the building uh, where we have our business program, including our two English taught programs. So if you decide to study at Windesheim, then you will spend most of your time in this building. And this is the building from the inside. And as you can see, well, personally, it's my favorite building. It is light and bright and, and transparent. So um, I love this building. Uh, another picture of our campus, uh, as you can see in the morning, most students arrive either by public transport or by bike. A bike is a very popular way of transport in the Netherlands, very convenient, also cheap. Uh, so uh, I would say this is the first thing you have to buy when you come to us, buy a bike. OK, some more facts. Um, Windesheim is quite a big university with 27,000 students. And we work together with many partner universities all over the world, 300. That's quite a lot. And why is that important for you? Well, during your study, you're going to study abroad uh, during one semester. And then there is a lot to choose for you. So if you want to go to, well, to South Korea or uh, to North America, or everywhere in between, there are plenty of options for you. So that's really nice. Furthermore, we offer high quality education. I already told you that the level of education in the Netherlands in general is high, but Windesheim is always the number one or the number two in the Dutch rankings of applied sciences universities. There are two different rankings. In one, we are the number two, the other, we are number one. So at least you know that you're um, studying at a top rated university. We offer two English taught bachelor's programs. We offer global project and change management, or uh, I often say also sustainable uh, business. And we offer international business. And now our students are going to tell you about those programs. Uh, let's first start with um, international business. Uh, Anastasia, maybe you can take over. Anastasia is a second year student uh, from Ukraine. And Anastasia, please come in and tell about your experiences in this study program. Hi, everyone again. Um, as you already know, my name is Anastasia. I am a second year student at Windesheim following the international business program. I'm in the second year and I've been living in the Netherlands for already almost two years. And now I will tell you the most important information about our program. So uh, my goal is that after this presentation, you have a clear understanding of what you're going to do here. So uh, here you can see the topics that we we are working with during our program. So first is finance and accounting. Uh, basically, it's it's pretty clear. It's about finance. It's about accounting. So you're doing some uh, solving some problems also like uh, investigating finance that are appropriate for business, how it works and those kind of things. 
Then we have operation and supply chain management. This is basically about uh, yeah value and business chains, logistics, and uh, you know all the process from the raw material to your customer. So what is going on between all those steps? Uh, then we have marketing and sales, so we also learn uh, all the things about marketing, also about digital marketing, how do you want to uh, promote your product so as much people as possible can know that your business exists and also how you can sell your products. And the last one, pretty vague organization and people, it consists of two different subjects, which is organizational strategy and HRM, so human resource management. And the second one is organization behavior. So here we are just learning like the very basic things about your, about the organization, like what are the key areas of an organization? How do you want to start if you want to launch a business? From which aspect do you want to start and also what is the strategy of the business how do you want to develop it like what are like the rules which you need to follow and also recruitment process how do you want to hire people into your organization and all of those topics you learn in the first year and then you just develop it so sometimes you have some projects that are very compound so in one project you can mix like a few of those topics but usually it's in the second year so first year is pretty more theory so you learn all the basics and then in the second, third and fourth year, you actually implement those knowledge into action. So then you can see that we have projects, we have group projects uh, all over the program. So from the first year to the fourth year. Also, we have a lot of individual assignment, but it's quite different. Uh, in the second year, in the second semester, you will have the internship in the Dutch company. Uh, so uh after the first year you have to know what is your key area that is most interesting for you so for me is marketing so the next uh, semester i'm gonna have an internship in the dutch company and i will be working in marketing department and if you're interested in finance for example you can choose the internship uh in the finance department and etc uh, then in the third year, Anast Anastasia, yeah. uh, for which company are you going to work? Maybe some people know it or you can tell a bit about that company. Uh, sure. I'm going to have my internship in uh, Rai. It's located in Amsterdam and this is uh, the biggest Congress in the Netherlands. So this company is uh, um, launching big international events and I actually will work for one of these events that called Amsterdam Drone Week. I think that maybe some of you heard it, but it's very, very popular, especially for students from Windesheim. Uh, yeah. That's and you you get it. Yeah, you can choose uh, actually whatever company you want. You also have some uh, partnerships company, which are maybe more uh, like, like low achievable for international students. So like there are lots of uh, students from Windesheim who will go to those companies, but you also can uh, search these companies by yourself. And what is really nice that in the second year, in the first semester, you are actually taught how you want to apply for your job. So how you make a good motivation letter, how you make a proper CV, what do you do so employers can actually see your profile or just know that you are looking for a job. So this is very nice and also very, very relevant for your future because anyways, you have to learn it somehow. Uh, and in the first year, you have your final specialization and graduation with company. Course, fourth year is the last and it's more or less flexible. So we have the PPR uh, subject and this is just uh, some random thing that you can choose by yourself and uh, and uh, get credits for it. So uh, you can choose working for two months in the company or you can choose to uh, do some projects abroad, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's very, very broad. Uh, and yeah, in this way you can choose your learning pathway. So this is very, very uh, broad program and the, what is nice about it so usually people say that I chose international business because I 
know for sure that business that is something that I have my passion in, but I don't know like which uh, field in business I am like uh, I have the most interested in. So in international business, you have this chance. So you learn a little bit in all like important segments of business and then you can like narrow it down. So then you can actually understand, oh, I think that like marketing is something that I want to work in my future. And then you can prove it or maybe do absolutely vice versa during your internship. So you can understand, yes, this is what I want to do. Or probably you can say, no, I don't think that I really like it. I want to choose another pathway. So, yeah, I think that this is like a very nice way how you can actually choose what you want to do for your future. Okay, and one more question about the project. You already did a few projects in, in year one and you're now also working on a project. Maybe you can mention one or maybe two examples of projects to give an idea about what, what it includes. Uh, sure, we have very like complicated projects, so if I will explain it in detail, it will last for one hour for sure. <laughs> no, so please don't do that. <laughs> I, I, I will do this like as uh, much as I can to make it like uh, in a nutshell. So for finance, for example, we had a group project in the first year uh, where you have to compare two different companies. In my case, it was... Um, um oil big oil companies like shell and bp and based on lots of financial uh things i had to compare it and made a conclusion on uh which company is the best for investments so let's say i'm an investor and i want to invest my money into some company in some industry but i know i don't know, I don't know which company to choose and i don't know how i should choose it so based on which criterions and this is actually what we did and for example for organization strategy we had a very nice project which was actually building your own company so you had to create a very like natural prototype of your organization you had to create a name you had to create a strategy for your company your product and like uh, how do you want to sell it how it should look like and then present it in a ways of presentation so this is like a tool like approximate ideas how our projects can look like but later on it, it just gets more complex and complex so like you have to do a lot of things and usually it's both group projects and individual projects that like kind of correlated between each other if you know what i mean so yeah but like this is a very practical approach in every project and also most of the time we have to work either with some business companies so we have to explore the business of like a real company to make a conclusion for our project or like i don't know just uh, ask for a feedback into some company and uh, i really like this approach so we can actually learn like to work with the real business during our study so it's not the theory of course we learn a little bit of the theory but it's just uh, like a minimum and then you actually go into practice and like getting a very nice experience. Uh, on this slide you can see what are the studying like atmosphere, how it looks like. So there are lots of pictures on like some activities that we do. On the bottom you can see the two pictures with presentations because um, most of the time we need to present the findings from our projects in a way of presentation with my group. Uh, in the right side on the top you can see one of our projects as well because we need to visit it, Den Haag and Rotterdam to make a marketing research. Uh, just in the middle you can see how the ideation process can look like. So when you need to brainstorm, you need to generate ideas, you need to explore like different tools how you want to do this and this is what we did with my group once on the left side in the corner you can see how we were preparing for our exam so we actually made a kahoot to practice with my group mates and it actually worked pretty nice so i really like this approach as well uh and yeah on the left side in the corner on the bottom you can see the cultural expo i believe so in this project we had to compare two different cultures and also present the findings like 
what are the similarities, what are the differences uh, in those cultures. And this was one of the games. Uh, this was like uh, two stripes and on the stripes were like two different kinds of food. One was from the Netherlands and one was from Indonesia. And people had to like eat it with the closed eyes. And like the winner was the person who ate it as fast as possible. <sighs> yeah, so. And on this slide, you can see like more uh, of my student life outside the Windesheim. Uh, so usually I spend a lot of time with my group mates, with my friends. Uh, sometimes we also organize events in Windesheim and we like we can celebrate it like uh, at Windesheim also with our program. Uh, very soon on 18th of December we have a Christmas event and like uh, all the students from international business and global project and change management are invited. So um, yeah, I think that like I am pretty sure that the time that we are spending like here it's very very fun and also we have lots of nice activities like Browse Week, which is basically the introduction week. So if you will come to the Netherlands, I strongly recommend to attend this intro week because it's basically like a lot of fun during like two and a half days. And like you can see the picture from it on the uh, right corner at the bottom and just above it. So we were like, we had a camping for two days. And this year I was a coach for one of my um, first year students uh, and it was very, very fun. So if you will go to the Netherlands, you need to, you must, it's actually a must, you must uh, visit this browse fake. And yeah, this is uh, about my program basically. Okay, thank you Anastasia. Uh, I will continue with uh, job opportunities after uh, graduation uh, from this program. And uh, because the program is very broad uh, with four main topics, you see that our students uh, go to work for all kinds of organizations. You can read it yourself. It's uh, an overview. I asked two students, what are your friends doing right now? And this is the list I received. So you can become a recruiter. Uh, you can become a facility coordinator. So that is uh, linked to the logistics part of the study. Uh, a business developer, a sales manager, which is uh, linked to the marketing part of the program, a community marketeer at a university, an account manager in Dusseldorf. As you can see, it is a broad list of, of options and really, really nice jobs. OK, when you want to study this, what we need from you then is your high school diploma of your own country. Uh, uh, some of you might do an uh, might be at an international school, maybe the international baccalaureate. Then we need 24 points. Uh, if you're doing A levels, uh, you can find all the details on our website. It's too much to to mention it here, but in general, we need your high school diploma. And for uh, most of the students, we also need an English language proficiency test that can be IELTS, TOEFL, or Cambridge. Cambridge. If you have this, so your high school diploma and the language proficiency test, then you will be automatically accept, accepted. Uh, there is no, um, um, uh, how do you say that? Uh, there is no um, interview uh, or selection procedure for this program. Deadline for application is 1 June for non-EU students and 15 June for students. And then coming back on the English language proficiency test that is necessary for most students, but not for all students. There are some diplomas, some countries um, for which uh, the language proficiency test uh, is not necessary. That is for students uh, from the Netherlands and from Germany, but also Estonia, Slovakia, Hungary, Lithuania, Latvia, Romania. I mentioned here the countries of uh, students who might be joining this, uh, who registered for this webinar. Uh, if your country is not mentioned here, then you can check uh, our website. But there are certain countries for uh, which we don't need the test, but for most countries we need the language proficiency test. Okay, 
And now we go to uh, Sharka. Sharka is a second year student of our global project and change management student, um, sometimes called uh, sustainable business by me. Uh, Sharka, please come in and tell us about your program, please. OK, so hello, everyone. My name is Sharka. I'm from Slovakia and I'm a second year student of the Global Project and Change Management, or as we call it, the GPCM for short. And this program is basically for anyone who is passionate about making a positive change in the world, but is lacking the skills and the knowledge about how to make this because it's not easy. And this program is fully taught in English. It's a four year program. And at the end, you will get the Bachelor of Business uh, Administration, so the BBA. And um, in the next slide, you can see the structure of the program. So basically, the first two years, the blue part is the years that you are expected to be present. So you're here in Svola, you're studying with your classmates, you're making projects here, like local projects. And the three areas that you see are only areas. So I will tell you a bit more about the specific classes that we have. Then in the year three or four, you can choose um, which of these green things you do first. So you can choose between the value creators, managing projects in a globalized world and free choice elective. You can choose the order. That's why it says year three and four. So you start in year three and you can finish in year four. So the free choice elective is the basically the semester abroad. And as it's been already mentioned, we have so many partner universities, so you can really choose from many, many different countries and many programs that you're interested in. Then the managing projects in a globalized world is basically similar to what you will be doing in year one and two, but it is abroad. So you will be really managing project abroad in a chosen country. And the value creator is basically where you you do not have a pro one project or one client, but you're trying to use your network and connect with other people and other stakeholders to really bring some value into the world. And so the last semester of the fourth year is where you do your internship. And this can be in the Netherlands, but also in any country of your choice. And then at the end, you come back to Svola and you get your graduation ceremony and the title of Bachelor of Business Administration. So now for the first two years, here is an example of a schedule. If you were to be a first year next year, then this is how your schedule might look like. So we can see that the blue part, like the blue cloud, there are some classes that are expected to be covered in the world. So the world is where you basically learn, uh, gain knowledge about how the world works and what can be changed in the world. So you cover topics such as geopolitics, environmental economics, or history of globalization. So that's the knowledge. But now what to do with the knowledge? So you also need some skills. And that's where the orange and the green part comes in, which is called the professional. And that's where you gain some skills, such as business and academic writing, pitching and communication skills, research skills and data analysis. So research, for example, qualitative, where you do interviews with people, but also quantitative, where you learn how to do statistics and really analyze data, which is very useful in any job that you decide to do. And then managing real life projects. So we really focus on project management, as you can see also from the title. And actually from the first week of your first year, you already have a team and you work on one project for one client for the whole first year. And this is real client and real pro project. So it's not theory, but really you learn by doing. Then also sustainable business and marketing. For example, in this semester, we were creating a business plan if we were to have a startup and what actually is needed to create this kind of startup and also the financial literacy, which is super important. And then the yellow, which is the sun or the me part is something that is really specific for our program. And that is where you basically get a space to focus on your personal development. So we really value like our, your own personal and professional development, which is not part of the classes, but it is anything you decide to do. For example, you can choose to learn a foreign language or do some kind of sport that you want to get better in. Anything that will bring you like uh, an additional value. And we also sometimes have workshops 
organized by our program, which are called the Resiliency Labs. And all this will help you become just more resilient and more authentic in the world. And in the purple and below, you can see some additional things you can do. For example, when you don't have classes, when you don't, when you're not in school. So we have a lot of study sessions with, so with friends in the city center because our program is really community based. So it's been already mentioned that we are really small scale and we all know each other in our program. So like the first year and the second years, we all know each other and we often study together. We have dinners together, even with your project team. You work a lot in teams, so sometimes it's good not only to work together, but also do something fun together to really bond. And you can do many extracurricular activities, which can be here in the in winter time, but also anywhere in the city center, any kind of sport or dancing or anything you think of, basically. <laughs> and we also have many guest lectures from different professionals, for example, some graduates from our program or really it's really anything you can think of. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, Sharka, maybe you can share uh, some of your projects, one or two examples of your projects. Yeah, that was actually the next slide. And I would like to share with you, for example, this semester, we were designing a reusable workbook for kids in Zimbabwe with my team. But we were not actually in Zimbabwe, but we work with a client who is working for a school in Zimbabwe. So we were designing this reusable workbook, which was super interesting to research the different materials that can be made of. Then some of my friends were raising awareness about water shortage or even about the sexual consent. Last year, I had a project which was supposed to involve kids and youth in circular economy. And some of my friends were also making a homeless shelter a more sustainable place. So you can really see that it's ranging from more uh, environmental topics to more social topics. And some of them are even a combination of both. So it's super interesting. So those are the local projects. And then year, year three or four, which is the managing projects in a globalized world. You do projects abroad, for example, circular concrete production in Chile or developing utilized sustainable tourism in South Africa. So it's really all over the world. <laughs> yeah, and here you can see also the partner universities, very, which you can choose from for your free choice semester. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and lastly, some pictures. So this was from my project last year where we were involving kids in circular economy. So we were organizing these workshops in schools in Svola. We also made a movie for these kids and it was super interesting experience and we learned like so much about this. I, I was never expecting that I would be working with kids in this kind of area, but also that they were super grateful that we introduced this topic to them and the, the teachers were super grateful. And on the bottom right, there, that's my current project team. There was a presentation from a week ago that we just presented our final outcome of the project in front of all the clients and our classmates. And we made this big poster, yeah. And on the X slide, there are some other pictures from my life here in Spola, for example, the in front of the Christmas tree that is Secret Santa that we organized last year and that is most of the most of the year. So we are really like a big community and we just organized this Secret Santa to give each other presents, which was super nice. And we also often we just like to eat together with my friends and just having dinners to really bond. And the, you can see that Spola is a really beautiful city. There are many beautiful places to just go for a walk or have a picnic even. It's really a nice city. And the picture on the bottom right is actually from a project management class because we can really see that we do a lot of interactive learning. And this was when we went outside during the class. And yeah, it was just really a nice class. <laughs> OK, thank you. Uh, now my colleague Wanda will take over. She is working for the Global Project and Change Management uh, uh, program as well. And Wanda, maybe you can tell us something about career opportunities after graduation from this program. Yes, thank you, uh, Erna. I will. Um, so what we see uh, at uh, students uh, 
finish their, their study at uh, Global Project and Change Management, they go uh, and work uh, in different directions. They work for a for-profit organization, a non-profit organization, for the government, or they become an entrepreneur. And um, that's because Global Project and Change Management is quite a wide project management program and that's why you can do you can go into all different kinds of directions but most of them actually almost all are always related to sustainability or the sustainable development goals uh, which Sharka referred to earlier on in the presentation yeah so for example we have um, uh, an alumni he's working in the bank as a sustainability uh, manager uh, we have uh, somebody working at the as program manager at the European Commission um, and we also have uh, somebody working as uh, who set up his own clothing company, really his own fashion clothing company. And he started that during his study, actually. And uh, now it's a full on uh, sustainable business. So we're very, uh, very proud of that. Um, but also uh, some students before they uh, do their um, uh, before they start to work, they choose to do a master's and as you see here, most of the masters are all related to sustainability, but uh, um, they do them in different countries. Uh, there's one who has done a global business and sustainability in Rotterdam, stayed in the Netherlands. Um, but somebody else did international development, poverty, conflict and reconstruction in Manchester. So there is a lot of opportunities for you after you graduate of, uh, yeah, of GPCM. So if you're interested in our program, which we really hope, um, this is a, this I'm going to talk to you now about how you can apply to the program because it's different than with international business. Here there is a selection procedure. We are an honors program and we are selective. We select 80 students uh, yearly, a maximum 80 students. So the first thing you have to do is you have to register in StudyLink. Then you go to phase one and you have to fill in an online matching test. Those are just questions to see, like, do you fit the program? Yes or no. You have to send in your documents. Think about, uh, for example, your motivational letter, um, your grade list, um, uh, recommendation letter. And uh, then you go to phase two. If everything is OK in phase one, you go to phase two. You'll have an inter interview um, and uh, you'll take part in a group activity, which will both take place online and on the same day. And there are some mandatory requirements if you apply to global project and change management, um, which is mathematics and English. Now, for your mathematics, um, they are, yeah, the high school level uh, mathematics, uh, if you pass it, that is uh, sufficient. So it should be equivalent to a Ditch Havo or Fabio. Um, and for your English, uh, that's the same. You should have a sufficient for your uh, half or air Fabio. And Erin already showed us earlier uh, the list of um, countries. So you can see them also on our website if you are um, if you have to do an extra test for your English or that your English is uh, good enough from your high school. Maybe I would like to add something about the mathematics. There are high schools where they have two levels of mathematics. If that is the case in your country, then the, the lower level of mathematics is sufficient for this program. So it's yes. not the higher level in that case. No, correct. Yeah. Um, and it's good to know the application deadline that's very important is for EU students that is the 1st of June and for non-EU um, the 1st of May. So let's continue to the facilities, the campus, student facilities, housing, accommodations and costs. Um, there we have a lot of uh, student facilities. Uh, you can read them all here. We even have a bike repair shop. Uh, Erna showed you the beautiful picture before. And um, yeah, and sometimes, of course, something happens with your bike and it needs to be repaired. Um, maybe Anastasia, could you tell us uh, if you um, yeah, make use of one of these student facilities? 
Of course. Well, I didn't use a bike very often, so I didn't uh, use the repair shop yet in the Windesheim. <laughs> I know that it's quite nice. And uh, one of my friends during the browse week, he had some problems like a flat tire and it was very quick repair. So I know that it's good. Of course, I often use like basic uh, facilities like canteens, cafes, like uh, private spaces where I can uh, study on some projects. Supermarket is very nice because it's just just near our campus, so it's very cool. Uh, I know a lot of my friends, they go to gym after classes, so and we have also the swimming pool, like uh, other sport facilities that is also very nice. And uh, if you need any help or like support, I know that there is a counselor at Windesheim like to get some mental support. I didn't uh, like get use of it because I didn't use it, but I think that it's very nice facility. And also if you have any questions or like you need just like piece of advice, I am pretty sure that you can easily approach one of your lecturers or your coach and you will always get some like important information that you need to hear one for just from your lecturers because they are very supportive and in my case i also had some like personal troubles and i had to like uh, uh hear someone from a side like just like a couple of advices you know and i actually asked my coach and she helped me very much so just in case you like you're just a bit in doubt or you just need you know to hear someone's opinion you can always ask your lectures it's not a problem they are always very uh like uh easy uh achievable uh, like uh, you can reach them all the time so this is not a problem for you yes thank you for thank you for sharing with us maybe sharka in short uh do you make use of anything yeah, most of the supermarket and the cantings and cafes, they make really good fries, so that's good. And yeah, I don't go to gym, but most of my friends use the gym. So, and I'm really always thinking about going there. Also, like the swimming pool looks so nice, but I haven't been there yet. But <laughs> Maybe in the future. Mm. Yes, thank you for sharing. Yes, let's go to the, to the cost. Um, so for EU students uh, to study uh, here at Windesheim, it's uh, 2,530 euros a year. And for non-EU students, it is 6,930 euros a year. Accommodation costs, they vary between uh, 350 and 650 euros a month. And the living costs are between uh, 350 and 550 euros per month. We do not offer scholarships and a part-time job in uh, is an option for EU students. Yes, then the accommodation. Um, if you would like to study the program Global Project and Change Management, first year housing is uh, guaranteed and it's 435 euros a month. And for international business, uh, you can find a house uh, for yourself. It's between the 350 and 650 euros. Um, it's good to mention that uh, I believe um, this year, every international business student found a house, but that was not the case, uh, for example, in the year before. So we really... Uh, I think, Wanda, you're not there right now, so I will continue your story so the students don't have to wait. Uh, Wanda wanted to tell that this year all students found housing, the year before not, so we really recommend, ah, there is Wanda again, we really recommend to start early if you want to study international business. Start already in March with, with finding housing. On our website you will find all the, uh, all the links and options there are. Maybe also good to tell that finding housing in the Netherlands in, in general is a challenge. Uh, in Zwolle, it is easier than in the bigger cities like Amsterdam, Rotterdam, The Hague, but still it is challenging. Yes, thank you. I'm back again, I believe. Um, thank you for taking over, Erna. So if you would like to meet us, uh, you can uh, come to our open days. The next one is uh, after the winter break in, uh, in January, 26th of January. It's a Friday and otherwise we have another uh, open day on Friday, 12th of April. 
Um, and uh, we have an online open day session uh, the 9th of April. And uh, yeah, we really recommend you to become uh, a student for a day. You'll be linked to a current student. You'll see how the atmosphere is, uh, maybe even have lunch together. Uh, and there's always also an option on our website to chat with our students if you want to hear more uh, insights from them. And everything can be found on winnetime.com slash meet us. Yes, so um, yeah, oh yeah, this is actually uh, what I said before. We really invite you to become a, a student for a day. And I'm not sure, Shark of Anastasia, did you, uh, did one of the two of you do a student for a day because you're from abroad? Uh, can you repeat the question? Because I didn't hear you very well. Uh, no worries. No, it was about if you did a student for a day because you're from abroad, if it was possible for you. Oh, I actually don't know because I knew about Windesheim just before September. So I literally called the student administration of Windesheim on 31st of August. And I was like, I'm coming to you. <laughs> 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 Something like this. So I didn't, uh, I didn't go for a student on a day. But uh, last year, uh, my classmates, they were like three classmates that uh, had like uh, the, they were the bodies for students for a day. And uh, yeah, I think that we actually have three or four students um, now in the first year. And the last year they were students for a day. So this is actually a very nice tool for you to see how it looks like. But usually it's uh, happening still in this year. So if you're coming in the Netherlands like in summer or just before the starting um, academic year, I don't think that it will be possible, but maybe online. I'm not sure about this, but you can uh, see like more information on our website or contact some of us and ask about this. Yeah, I think it's until until May that you can be uh, become a student uh, for a day. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I also want to say that yeah. I, was, I was not a student for a day because I come from abroad, so it would not make sense to just come for that one day. But right now I am a student for a day buddy, so I'm actually take I'm getting assigned some people and then that I'm taking them to the class and showing them around. And I think it's always such a nice experience because they they really see more than just from a website so they can really experience. And we also, yeah, we always have a lunch together and it's it's nice. <laughs> Yes. OK, thank you, everyone, for your uh, contribution to this presentation. 